Hey everybody, welcome back for another one. Going to be doing uh, the Joker tonight. Going to share this over with Paige real quick, and then we're going to knock this out. And uh, I'm hoping it'll be a short one. Uh, we'll see. So I would like to get this one done pretty fast. Got a lot on the table, and uh, just want to get this one out of the way so we can get our daily done and move on. So, anyway, here we go. Hey, Martin, how's it going? Uh, let's see. We're going to start in with this sword. I'm going to keep it pretty simple here. Just going to do a simple brown lashing on this. I'm going to do this um, very clean, very animated, and... Uh, Simple, simple, simple. Just a couple of colors here and there, and that's it. Because I want to make this pop. Now, this is going to be like one of these claw grab machines, like I said, when I actually made the drawing. Um, this Batman is just a little different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here with some C5 real quick. And do up uh, the body like this. And then in a simple blue, I'm going to go with the uh, cape and whatnot. I know I'm crossing the lines, but I'm doing that on purpose because of the fact that the body allows for that. So, Okay, right up the edge there. Try not to cross into that logo. Torn fabric right there. Try not to do that foam too much. I want to color that an off gray or maybe even a leave it white. I haven't decided yet. Like I said, this is like a a uh, grab claw machine type of thing, and I wanted to do it this way because of the fact that I wanted to make Batman look like um, have a voodoo doll type of thing going on, so we could really get into that. I'll black out those white spots too. There's the rest of his arm right over there. Back behind the Joker's collar there. That's the rest of his arm there. And that's a little bit of his cape right there. We'll leave that light. We'll leave that light. Good deal. Cool deal. I want to come in with this blue and fire it up that way. Mr. Jim O'Reilly. Raymond, thank you for making it on, man. I know it's tough for you to get on here, man. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy work day. Both of you guys got everything going on. Cards and whatnot. And comics. Um, if you haven't seen Jim's lives, they're pretty solid. They're fun to watch. He's a great guy. Check him out. He's a fun dude to watch. Um, however, Raymond has got... Uh, that dude's got the solo comic book, which it has a 90s feel to it. It's got a very clean, action-oriented type of style to it. Check it out. Because uh, free plug plug for those guys because they do awesome work and they are very supportive of what I do. So, therefore, they are friends. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. And I checking this stuff out because uh, Jim you never know what he's gonna do but uh, you know he's got some wild stuff going on with the the Walking Dead cards and things like that that he always does and his star his Star Wars cards are phenomenal I love those things and um, I actually have a set on order Jim by the way if you're watching I have a set of those on order thank you very much uh, mr. Jimbo did not give me any of those cards but uh, I ordered my own set because I found out he was going to be involved. And uh, a couple of family members liked them, and they said, <clears throat> we must know. Please, please order us cards. So I did. <laughs> so investing in the industry, folks. Got to do it, got to do it. So... And I am so busy right now. Oh, my goodness, this is crazy right now. 
because uh, the last 90 days or so, I've been kicking out a bunch of stuff. I got asked right before I came on what I've been doing, and um, I've been kicking out a bunch of stuff to finish up projects for 2017, and uh, I'm about six months into my schedule for 2018 already, so uh, you guys are going to get to see a lot of cool stuff coming up finally, books coming off the shelves and things like that, you know, coming out and whatnot. It's going to be cool. I'm very excited about that. Very excited, very excited. Right now, I've got 12 pages that I'm doing for an anthology uh, intro to one of my comics that is going to be an ongoing series there shortly after. And uh, I sit down to write uh, this treatment. When I got asked to do the anthology, I, got, I sat down to do the treatment. And it was supposed to be uh, 12 to 16 pages. And I ended up writing a, 160 pages plus and turning it into a series. So I was kind of like shooting myself in the foot uh, by doing that. But it's okay, though, because of the fact that I got into it and wanted to uh, have all of that go on. And it's, it's cool. Um, I do the mega book, um, the mega book uh, anthology every year. I've done it for the since number three, and we're on number five now, so I've done it for the last three years. And I really, really, really dig that uh, that book. And uh, Mike gives it away for free. If you don't know about that book, you can check out the website and go from there. But um, I thought it was really cool the way uh, Mike put all that together, public domain and whatnot. And uh, not public domain, excuse me, not public domain, but uh, free. And uh, he does his public domain stuff in that book. Let me put it that way. That's the way I was going to phrase it. And because um, everybody, every creator owns all of their properties within that. So don't go thinking that, you know, you can grab it and use it and whatnot because they don't do it that way. But um, it's for free. And he uses his public domain stuff in it. And uh, go off and get a bunch of people griping at me because they're in the book and they got their creator stuff in there. What do you say that for? No. But just be clear, crystal clear, it's not uh, it's not public domain stuff that he uses. It's his characters based on public domain. So, um, as well as his original scripts, which are really cool. But anyway, yeah, it's for free. You can get it when he put when he puts it out. The mega book. You can check it out online. You can Google it and find out where it's at and all that, and uh, go from there. But it will not be free. Um, to use publicly. So. But it's free to get. So I misspoke there. And I do not want people to think that you said it was free, man. We could use it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't go do that. A bunch of people will lose their marbles. So let's not do that. But um, yeah, it's all good, though. Check it out and uh, have some fun with it and see where it goes from there. Because. Uh, there's some great reads in there. I've, I've worked on a couple of different things for the last couple of issues of it, and I, I really, really dig that stuff. Now, I'm going to let that sit for a second, and instead of going into uh, – where is it? There it is. Instead of going into the uh, typical uh, dark shade right there, I'm going to leave this light right now, and I'm going to go ahead and put in these green gloves, which kind of matches hair. And uh, I'll shoot from his suit. I like mixing it up here because I put in two or three grade, uh, gradients of purple, two or three gradients of green, and uh, really mix him up kind of like the old school comics did. Um, I, I love the, the old the old contemporary look of the uh, costume instead of having it just like crazy you know, all over the place kind of deal. I like it looking a little bit nuttier. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and put this in because it's the same green that I'm going to use as the base for his eyebrows and for his uh, hair. And then I'm going to go in and shade all that. So if it runs over a little bit, I'll cover it with gray, like that little spot right there. But, um, Anyway, like I said, just going to keep this a couple of different shades here and very simple, very clean.
Yeah, um, I, I saw your post there, uh, Raymond. Yeah, I mean, that, that's crazy. I just sat down. I put in a 90-minute block time on the uh, on the egg timer, as it were. It's not literally an egg timer. It's a digital timer. I have an atomic clock on my uh, computer uh, that I write on. And I set the timer for 90 minutes, and I sat down, and I said, okay, I'm going to knock this 12 pages out. Uh, if it drags on me or I get writer's block or whatever, um, here we go. I sat down, and an hour in, I had over 160 pages, and I actually had to stop before I hit another arc um, because I was going to go so far into it that I was going to take it into another another uh, major story arc, and I didn't want to do that because right now this one is so massive. It's probably going to be two or three. It's either going to be two or three um, smaller graphic novels in parts, or it's going to be one major graphic novel. I haven't decided if I'm going to make it into a, uh, a monthly comic book type of thing yet because I have so much going on right now. I don't know that I can do that uh, accordingly to my schedule, and I don't want to break it down to where you guys have to postpone getting comics from me because of the fact of you know something else coming up. And um, I'm one of those type of people. I get so many projects going. Um, I get ADD about it. And uh, I tend not to get anything done, a little bit of a lot of stuff, or I have to schedule it to where I can get a lot done, get it off my table and get it out. That way I don't have that problem. Otherwise, I'll sit there all, you know, all the time and just be stuck. And it's because my mind is so high, uh, highly active and hyper. And uh, that's just something I've always done. It's, you know, get it done now and get it knocked out or it'll be six months down the line of, you know, rush, rush, wait. And I don't like to do that. I don't like to do that at all. So what I like to do is get it done, get it scheduled, get it knocked out, and get it off my table as soon as possible. Otherwise, um, you know, you may be waiting six months for it, and I really don't want to do that. Uh, I've gotten into a bad habit of that, and uh, some of my back burner projects are way overdue compared to where they should be because of that simple, uh, that simple bad habit. And uh, that, that's one of those things that I had to overcome and get back on track for. So, and I, I don't want to have people sitting waiting on books that should be done because I do so many pages a day anyway. In the habit of, you know, my 18-hour day, I normally do three pages a day no matter what because I do my business stuff in the morning and then I've got time to draw, and um, unless I block time out for writing or something, it's all about the artwork. And I don't want to get into that habit again. I'm getting back into the the old way of getting on there, getting it done, and getting it laid out, getting a full book down, and getting it finished up. I produce every day because of the fact that I get into those schedules. But I have so many projects that I'm doing, I have to go from this book to this book to this book over a month period to get everything going. Uh, I was doing six titles at one time, and I, I just got overloaded, and I had to back off some of it. So I'm going to do um, back burner building, which I've done since July, and I'm uh, going to start putting out books now regularly, and they're ahead of, they're ahead of, ahead of the curve to where I can actually do that. So that's my big thing. And um, don't get overwhelmed. My business and marketing projects are the same way. I, I tend to get stuff built out and set it and move on because if I don't I'll be doing that crap for months and I can't you know do that I gotta get things moving and get on on board with stuff and get it all out there that's what happened with the webcomic you know I got behind because of the fact that I was doing so much more So I had to reschedule that stuff because it's just me, you know. I used to have teams, but it's just me now because uh, except for the exception of a couple of those people, most of them ended up flaking out, you know. They would come on, make a footprint with me, and then they would bail on me. And while they were supposed to be doing my comic, they would end up doing something else and using my comics, the couple pages they did for me as leverage to get out of my project and move on to another one. And I just had to stop doing that. You know, so I stopped trusting people with it, and now I've got a new team coming in in the middle of this year 
that's going to start building up with me. And uh, it's going to be awesome. You know, and I'm getting Lewis back on board with Thinking Catman, uh, hopefully over my work. And uh, he's one of the few guys that I really trust and count on with that. And uh, we're going to go from there. Because he's been my inker for a long time. And he uh, worked with all the other guys that were on board for a while. He inked a bunch of the, a bunch of the stuff for Firestorm. And I really want to get back to that. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be an interesting year, to say the least. But don't get into that habit, though. If, you, if you're producing work, stick with it. You know, everybody told me, you know, you better do one book. You're going to get overwhelmed. I was doing a couple of books, and I'm still not overwhelmed uh, doing the books. It's the flaky scheduling of other people that are involved in them that doesn't allow for that because I, I – can't do it all by myself and I just have to schedule it back and cut it back and count on getting, you know, the books done. But uh, it was the exact opposite, actually. We got overwhelmed with the fact that people weren't doing their work like they were supposed to, and that's where the damage came from. Sad but true. Sad but true. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put in this dark green here. Whoops. I don't need the wedge end. I need the brush in. That would have made a massacre of this. Um, you know, if you're doing your own book, get out there and market it and get your book get your book up there. You know, because um, I was just reading again that DC and Marvel both have decided to cancel books. You know, and they're canceling shows and things left and right to adjust. And uh, I just read an article from Overstreet that said, that there was a a thirty a thirty percent increase in mainstream in um, independent titles, and it doesn't match the numbers. And Marvel and DC have both been griping about the numbers not matching for the stats of what they're producing, and then being in trouble financially. So I, I think that's just very very interesting to see happen, and uh, I'm curious as to how that's going to work out. So. We shall see. I'm going to go ahead with this dark one right here on the tie because most people like to do this yellow, and I'm not going to. I'm going to go in dark, dark green with it. Most people like to do this like Colonel Sanders yellow, you know, where he has the black one. Most people go in with the uh, bright yellow right here, and I don't want to do that. I want to do, I want to do this dark green because I think I'm going to do the yellow on his shirt instead and make it. Uh, contrast that way. Besides, it'll kind of bum him out that way. Make him all depressed because his shirt's yellow. Look what you did to my shirt. Oop, that's the knot for the tie right there. I do not want to mess that up. I just messed up the sword there, too. That's okay. I'll fix it. The gray will wash that right out. But um, I'm going to go yellow right in here. That being the suit, shirt. And I'm going to leave these buttons open because I'm going to do them. Um... I think I'm going to do them in a green. What do you guys say? I think I'm going to do them. Let's decide right now. You want me to do the buttons in green or you want me to do the buttons in yellow? Thanks. I appreciate it, Ray. I really do, man. And see, I do that same I do that same thing, man. I do three a minimum of three issues before I touch anything to do with um, publication. Because if you don't have three issues lined up, on your uh, on your back end, your production line doesn't hold up from month to month. Everybody seems to think that th that your production lineup will hold up from month to month to month, and it can't. It cannot. If you do, no matter who do, does it, if you do a comic book this monthly, you cannot do a monthly book month to month to month. You will burn out. It will eventually stump you and catch up with you, and you will ground. I don't care if anybody, whoever you are, I don't care who says that you can't do it, that you can do a month-to-month -month book 
by yourself and make it happen, eventually it's going to peg you and it's going to come up and bite you in the butt. And that's a technical term. So don't do that because it's going to bite you one of these days. And I know that sounds horrible, and I'm going to black this blade out because I want it to look like that black, uh, black metal, you know, like that painted steel kind of kind of thing. Not to mention when it dries, it'll contrast to Batman. I think that's really cool. But uh, anyway, yeah, don't do that because you'll end up drowning yourself. I think I'm going to go – yeah, I think I'm going to go green. I think so too. I think I'm going to go green. I just like the color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that primary color that I used for the base. I'm not going to use the bright one because I want to use the bright one on here for contrast with his hair. I'm going to use a little bit of a dull, that dull olive green base like that. That, that works. Cool deal. Thanks for the suggestion, man. Um, let's see here. Now I'm going to go with this bright, this really bright, rich green. Um, it's more of a primary, but it works perfectly for what we need here with this hair. I'm just kind of feathering it in because I want it to blend in, not necessarily wash it out. I want it to leave highlights, but I want it to uh, blend in and kind of make it look like hair. Not really trying to texture it either. I'm just trying to make it blend to where it looks nice and even and it doesn't look like it's spray painted on his head that would look weird some people try to go super dark with this one and almost a black or a rich forest green and try to make it look you know um, like it's wet or oily and uh, to me that's not the joker and it tends to make it look funky I mean, I'm cool with that if that's your thing, but it's not mine. I, I I like the bright, loud, obnoxious, spooky Joker. You know, that's that's the easiest way to describe it. He the dude's creepy, and I like that look because of the fact that then I can go in with another color and kind of pop in some darks without worrying too much about it washing out the color. And that's why I'm not saturating this because I want it to break through a little bit. And then we go back through with this dark green that's in the gloves. And because there's three greens in here, I don't have to use near as much. And it contrasts with the green that's in there and it makes it look just crazy, crazy, crazy slick. Like I said, I'm just going through the middle here, kind of toning it a little bit. Nothing too heavy, nothing too outrageous. I mean, as if green hair is not already. I just want to kind of give it a base color. Think about it like a, a woman's hair. And uh, think about it like the roots, you know, when she dyes her hair. Um, or some guys, some guys have bad roots showing um, that's pretty cool <laughs> this is the times we live in but um, you know get, get it going to where it looks like it's roots to the hair and the base rather than just the entire hair color because then it'll make it look more natural and I don't know why that is um, but it just tends to make it look darker at the root which is towards the middle and then you'll have where the Sun hits it kind of thing and it'll change lighter like natural hair color does. And it'll make it look like it's his hair. See? Like that. And then now I'll go in with this gray, which is super dark. Because it is his hair, I want to avoid that contrasting and clashing too much with the uh, green in his, his uh, gloves and outfit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some shadows in the glove that would offset it to make it look like a, a felt kind of thing. That's the easiest way to describe it. It's like a felt, like his gloves, see, like that. So now you have that going on, a little bit of a contrasting shadow down here. 
under here where that would reflect. Down under here as well where it folds. Boom, boom, boom. Done deal. Now, on the suit, I'm just going to accentuate that a little bit. A couple of shadows, and we are going to call that a day because I don't want to overwork that. Like I said in the beginning, I want to keep it simple. So right along here where that hits, give it a little shadow. And up under here where that sword kind of reflects, but the light goes down behind it, so you got to separate it. Go ahead and go across. Why not? There we go. Like that. And we'll go right here under this collar. Kind of shades out just a little. And then, right here on Batman. Kind of put that shadow painted in under his mask a little bit. Shadow out one side. Just to make that pop just a little. I know I said I wasn't going to overwork it, but the thing is I want the detail there so it gives it that dimension without losing that cool edge. Okay, cool deal. Right here on this glove, put it on the inside just a little. Ding. Then I'll darken up that one streak. There we go, cool deal. Now I won't go back in and shade the Joker really dark because I don't want to mess him up. Uh, I want him to stay pasty white. Now, <clears throat> the one thing I have to check out is um, I have forgotten. I can't believe I've forgotten this. I have to check out the Joker real quick. Bear with me. This is the first time ever that I have forgotten to see what the Joker's eye color is currently. Because some say it's brown, some say it's not. I say they're that gray-blue, and that's what I'm going with. And uh, I've got a neutral here, so that's what we're going to do. And then I'll darken them up a little bit and maybe add a little blue texture. So we'll go in with this gray here. Some people make them blue. Some people make them green. Some people make them gray. I like to make them this bluish gray color like that. And then to accent it and make it pop off, we'll take the same dark blue that we used on Batman and we'll put it right here in the corner. So it'll make them look hazel or have that bluish gray tint to them, that crazy eye, bluish gray tint that he has. Because <clears throat> it depends on who you talk to. Sometimes they're brown, too. I've seen them brown. Um, so, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I like this look. This is what we're going to go with, and we'll call it a day. But uh, anyway, Matt, Bart, thanks for stopping on, man. I appreciate it. So with that said... I'm going to go in here on the lips just a little and uh, back in with the gray just a little bit. And I'm going to tone these up just a little to add kind of a lower organic feel to them like that. And we're going to call it a day. That is the Joker. Hope you dig it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.